Hello everybody, John here. And today onto the garage, I've got an unusual one for you. And that is, I need to fix my garage door. Why? Well, let me show you this. Up there with the top off is the controller for my garage door. I operate my garage door using a key fob. Uh, auto roll, this one is. Um, I've had three key fobs for this door since I had the house, and nah, they've always been a little bit dodgy, if I'm honest, in terms of quality, and they use the batteries up quick and all the rest of it. But eventually do the job of enough jabbing. In recent days, that unit up there has started to fail and I have to keep repairing the remotes to it. And it flashes to say it's lost its memory despite being plugged in, despite having a little memory battery in there, which I've also replaced. So if there's something wrong with that, maybe it's a rolling code thing, I'm not sure. So for the last few days, this, has been the key to my garage. Let me demonstrate. So first of all, I climb up a ladder. Then I get my cordless drill with a big hook in the end. Then I stick it through there. I work out which way it needs to go. I hope I'm right. And here we go. That is how I'm opening and closing my carriage door. A lot easier going down than up. And as the added bonus off, it's a lot of effort for one of these. So I can only open it about twice before I have to change the battery. <laughs> so time to fix it. Whilst I'm absolutely sure that if you know what you're doing, which I don't, um, I could repair the existing one because it, it's only a few circuit boards at the end of the day but I'm not that way inclined plus the remotes are really old and tatty and remotes cost quite a lot for that um, I decided to buy da -da -da. <laughs> new remote uh, yeah it isn't just a big remote control one of these kits And that is a complete new controller. Whoops. With new remotes. <clears throat> and in theory, this is going to be quite an easy install. I chose this particular model, which is a Neko or Nico, not sure. Um, what's the model name? New Remote 218001. Um, because it got really good reviews. Um, because it came from a supplier in the UK, which meant I could get it reasonably quickly, which is KBA Supplies Limited, um, because I could get it off Amazon, all those sorts of good things. But in theory, it's all gonna be nice and quick to install. I um, looked at various models of this that you can get it with two, three, four remotes, and you can also get it with and without this dome light on top. Um, without spending more than I wanted, I didn't, I wasn't able to get hold of a unit that just had a supply out to go to a remote courtesy light. And this one came with this thing on the top. So well, that's great. My existing unit has a wire that goes to a bulkhead light. It just means when the door opens, you can see what you're doing until you get to the light switch, but this will do the same. So I'm really quite pleased with it. And it has the advantage over my old one of it's got some manual controls on it, 
which I don't have, and if I had got those, I wouldn't be using the cordless drill. So it comes with instructions. Um, not overly detailed, but that's probably good in that it probably doesn't need much. Anyway, what I'm going to do next is get the old system unplugged, disconnected and took down. Okay, so we've got our on the wall. First thing, if, if like me, you've got no photo sensors, safety lights, beam breakers, call them what you like, then as per this instruction sheet, you're gonna to have to bridge two of the terminals. And in here, in this document, it shows you that they're number seven and nine, and they're numbered from the right. But in this picture, you can clearly say, see, it's the terminals labeled safe and 12 volt. So you literally just get a very short piece of wire and connect those two terminals together with a little loop of that wire. And it's the blue loop in this picture that you can see. And that is done. And it just makes the unit believe that the photo sensor is connected and showing that there's nothing in the way. On the right hand side, the first three terminals are pre-wired up on a UK unit anyway, to the three cores needed for your main supply. So we have brown live, blue neutral, and the yellow and green is earth. Now the cable from your motor on your door will go to the next four terminals. Common on the left of the four is blue, open is black, close is brown, and then earth is the yellow and green. Now I said open is one colour and closes the other colour. It's got to be said that motors get wired up different ways. So you may have to switch those two over. So basically install the whole thing. And if up buttons cause things to go down, then you need to swap over your brown wire and your black wire. There's a rubber gland or seal on the bottom of the unit. And you basically just poke your wires through. I'm using a screwdriver just to grab all of the ends and when you've got them pull them through the gland and that'll seal onto the outer and there's a couple of springy fingers let's call it which basically act as your cable grip or cord grip and as soon as you've pulled the cable up it will have gripped the cable into position so really no effort at all. And in this picture, you can see on my unit, blue on the left, that's the common. And I've got brown, then black, then the earth. The brown and black, as I say, may have to be switched over later if you find that your door goes in the opposite direction. At this stage, you can plug your three pin plug into the mains. And you should see the red light come on on the cover, which shows the power's on. There it is. And now you're able to do a quick test using the manual buttons on front of the cover. Um, press one of them and you'll know that it's wired up because the door will twitch. But you'll also see whether you've got the brown and black the right way around. If you want to program a remote, you just press and hold that little black button until an LED just above it lights up quite brightly. And then repeatedly click the up button until you hear a click coming from in here. That's when you know it's all done and it works. It's as easy as that. At the moment when I operate the door, if I just move it a touch, the light comes on, stop. I'm just going to see how long that light stays on, dome light. It's not very long. The length of time it's on is adjusted with that top pot. Yeah, that little black knob. Yeah, it's gone off. That's way too short for me. So I'm going to turn it right. And we'll see how we get on with that.
These are quite nice remotes. It's not metal, but it's got a nice metal effect on it. And you've got this little slide over cover, so you don't press the buttons when you're in pocket. But equally, you can press the lock button. And then until you press that one, which is the open button, those don't work. So if I press that, then go up, oh, it works again. Well, quite impressed, very easy, very neat. I'll put the cover on and it will look neat. So, kit's all fully installed. Um, that's just my light switch cord, if you're wondering what the bit of string is. Uh, there's a little red light on the front that shows it's powered up. The manual controls on the front. Oh, no, automated going down. You see the dome lights on, which is great. The motor stops the door at the bottom rather than uh, this unit. Although you can set it to remember a particular time to work down. I think it's better if you've got the adjustment on the motor, which I have. There's two little uh, turny pots up there. Um, or press that button. Up she goes. Obviously the stop button can be used to stop it at any position. And we've got our nice neat Nico uh, key fobs that can slide open, lock, unlock, unlock, and press the down button. And the down is on a dead man switch. And that's because unlike this button that you can only press whilst you're stood here safely, uh, you could be stood anywhere with the remote. Unlike the up, which is on a automatic cycle. So, quite happy, pretty neat. The dome light on the top means I haven't got to have wiring for that. Um, I think that cost me about ooh, high 70s, maybe 80 pounds in the UK. It will change, obviously, so I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get one similar, or if you're having the same sorts of problems as me, but simplicity itself to install as a repair for an old system or if you're building a new system, and the keypads are quite nice. Right, that'll do from me. Hope you enjoyed this quick video, and if you have, consider subscribing. Always doing wonderful things in the garage, whether it's dealing with Purdy, the XK8, or we're playing with Betsy, the T4, or our Jeep, or our XJ6. Uh, we've got all sorts of little projects that must come out as soon as the weather starts getting better, like the downhill gravity racer, which needs a lot of attention. And um, yeah, join us for more fun on to the garage. <laughs>